Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Twisted Fables. This is the latest game from Dimension Games. It is a 2-4 to four player game that takes roughly 30-60 to 60 minutes to play, and is a competitive head-to-head -head game where each player is going to control one of the Twisted Fables, battling against the other player to eliminate that player. And the first player that is able to do this will be the winner. The players are going to do this by selecting one of the Twisted Fables, and then each Twisted Fable has their own custom deck of cards that is broken into three different stacks of cards that the players are going to be building and buying cards from throughout the game. The players will also have access to a, a basic deck of cards that include attack cards, defense, and movement in three levels. As the players progress through the game, they'll have access to buying higher and higher cards, building up their deck and making it more powerful, and being able to pull off some really impressive combos to hopefully eliminate their opponent in time before they get eliminated. So in this video, I'll be taking you through and showing you all the main features, some of the characters that are included, and talking about some of the features that will be included in the deluxe version as well. I'll also be playing through a sample turn to show you roughly how the game plays. If you're interested in checking out a full playthrough, I'll have a link up in the top corner to that video so you can see how the game completely plays, showing you the first, middle, and end few turns. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay tonight on all my videos, also considering that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's go ahead and head to the table and I'll show you what this one's all about. The first deck of cards I want to look at are the basic cards, and this deck is going to be comprised of three different types of cards, attack, defense, and movement, and this is going to be broken down into three levels, at level one, two, and three, and as you work your way up, those become more and more powerful cards. The one exception to this is the level one deck, which also has a wild, which will count as one of the different symbols of your choice when you play that card. Each Fable also has their own custom deck of cards that only the player that controls that Fable can purchase from. This deck is going to be broken down into three sub-decks, which will be listed under the Skill Supply Decks section of that Fable's card at the beginning of the game, and each one of these decks is going to be fixed, and will focus on a specific power such as Attack, Defense, or Movement. Each of these decks, as the player purchases cards from it, will reveal twist cards, and once a twist card is revealed, it'll be placed in front of that player, and will give that player some sort of special power or bonus that they'll be able to use for the rest of the game. As they go deeper into the deck still, there'll be a second twist card revealed for that deck, and again, that'll be placed in front of that player. And again, each player will have three decks of cards that they'll be able to purchase from, tailoring their player to whatever type of playstyle they want. Each Fable also has three epic cards, and when unlocked, the player will choose one of them, discarding the other two from the game. Each one of these will provide the player with a major power throughout the rest of the game that they'll be able to use whenever it is in their hand. Each player is also going to receive a plastic dashboard that they're going to slot their Fable into, and will track all of their stats throughout the game. They'll have their current health, their threshold, which once reached by their health track, will unlock their epic card their current defense, and their power gauge, which they'll use each turn to buy new cards to add to their deck. From here, I want to take a closer look at each one of the fables included in the core game. So the first one we have is Red Riding Hood, and she's the most straightforward of the fables. With her, if you're looking for a fable that is going to do a lot of damage quick and is good at range, she is your fable. She has the lowest amount of hit points though, and she doesn't have a lot of defensive options, so you want to hit with her hard and fast before the other Fables can get their decks in order to start doing damage to you. Snow White is going to focus on corrupting her opponent's deck by adding poison cards to it, and there's going to be a number of cards in her deck that will allow her to do this. As those cards come up into the opponent's hand, they must play them, and they're going to do direct damage to that opponent bypassing their health. As Snow White digs deeper into her deck, she's going to unlock twist cards that are going to make the poison cards even nastier. Snow White does have some disadvantages though. She is not good at ranged combat and getting in close with that opponent. So she is really going to focus on defense and getting those poison cards in there to slowly corrupt and kill her opponent by poison. Sleeping Beauty is the only character that has a double-sided card. She's going to start off on her asleep side, and as she takes damage, she's going to add her tokens to her card. Once she has acquired six tokens, she is going to wake up and flip her card over. From that point on, she can spend these tokens to boost her attacks or other skills. And once she runs out of tokens, then she'll flip her card back over to her sleep side. Sleeping Beauty is going to focus on dealing lots of damage. She can dish out a ton of punishment. 
On top of that, she can also choose to take damage herself to boost some of her attacks or give her other bonuses. As she digs deeper into her decks, she is going to unlock twist cards that are going to allow her to do all kinds of nasty things, and if she reaches the bottom of them, she even has twist cards that will heal her throughout the game. She also has the highest amount of hit points of any of the fables in the core set. Alice is the most complicated fable of the core game. With Alice, she has to choose one of her avatars to be at the beginning of her turn, and each avatar is going to give her a bonus to one basic card and a negative to another. Throughout her turn, she can take advantage of her skill cards, and some of the skill cards will allow her to change to different avatars so she can maximize her effectiveness throughout the turn. Alice's downside is that she does not have a lot of attack cards, as she only has one deck that provides attacks, and even those aren't very substantial. Alice is going to mainly focus on gaining basic cards into her deck, and if she can make it into the later parts of the game, she can really take control, being able to move around very quickly and gaining additional cards into her hand and drawing new cards throughout her turn. Really taking advantage of her avatars is going to be key to Alice's success. Mulan is all about fast attacks, taking risks, and pinning her opponents in corners to cause them to discard cards from their hands. Now, Mulan has the lowest maximum defense of any fable in the game, but she can also choose to discard defensive cards outside of her turn to help her with her defense, and she'll also gain mystical tokens that she can use to increase her hand size, help her with her attacks and mobility as well. The final fable in the core set is Kagaya, and she's going to focus on defense and counterattacks. She's one of the only fables that can play attack cards outside of her turn to counterattack opponents that are attacking her, now on the downside, she has a low number of hit points and it does take a little while to build up her defense to take full advantage of it. So initially, you're going to want to focus on her mobility and keeping her out of range of opponents until you can build her deck up so you can take full advantage of her defense and her counterattacks. Moving over to the expansion fables and the ones that are also included in the deluxe set, the first one is the Little Mermaid, and she is going to focus on, she will have tentacle tokens that she is going to be placing out throughout the game, and she'll have access to additional ones, and she's going to be manipulating these throughout the game, moving them onto spaces with opponent's fables and doing damage to them or protecting herself as she has a low defense. So her main focus is going to be using those tentacles to her advantage in any way she can. The next one is the Match Girl, and she is going to focus on manipulating power. She is going to be able to place match cards into her opponent's deck, and when they come out, the opponent gets to use them as wild cards, but they're also going to add power to her that she can then later on spend to do damage to her opponent, or draw additional cards, or have other effects as well. The third character is Dorothy, and she is a killing machine. She has a ton of attack cards, and she's going to be able to chain her attacks together into combos that she's going to gain tokens for that she'll be able to spend to do a number of other things. And she can chain a number of these in succession, so Dorothy is going to be one to watch out for. She also has a lot of hit points, so you're going to want to try to take care of her quick, otherwise she will definitely take you off the table. And the final expansion character is Cheryl Azad, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. So with her, she is all about manipulation. She will have tokens that are going to have a blue and a red side that you're going to be placing in or by supply decks that are going to have effects on other players. There's going to be a number of different effects that she's going to be able to do, including causing damage, having players discard cards from their hands, and a number of other things. So she is going to be the puppet master controlling her opponent or trying to control her opponent as she brings them to their doom. The last thing I want to cover before moving into a sample turn are relic cards. So this is an added level of strategy you can add to your game once you're experienced with it, in order to do that, instead of making your fight track with face down relic cards, you'll shuffle up your relic deck and place those cards face up, creating that fight track instead. Then, it, during each player's turn, they can choose to use one of the relic cards that their figure is on at that time, and the way that they'll activate it is by discarding a skill from their hand, and then based on the level of that skill will determine the effect of the card. For example, with this one here, it will recover a number of hit points based on the skill you discard. So if she discarded this skill here, this is a level 2, so she would receive 2 hit points back. At the end of each player's turn, any relic cards that are used will be replaced with new relic cards from the deck. 
From there, let's go ahead and move into the sample turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with Red Riding Hood and then I'll move over to Sleeping Beauty. Now, the one important note that I wanna point out with this is that normally during the start of the game, the first player to go will only receive four cards in her starting hand, where in this example, I went ahead and dealt six cards to each player so that I could show you a full turn. From there, let's go ahead and move over to Red Riding Hood's turn. And so during each player's turn, it is broken down into four phases that are done in order. And the first phase is the beginning phase. During this phase, if you have any cards left in your play area that have any lasting effects that are going to be taken care of during this phase, you'll resolve those now. From there, then we're going to move into the refresh phase, where you're going to discard any remaining cards that are in this play area. And then you're also going to decrease your defense back down to zero if you had any remaining defense from the previous turn. From there, then you're gonna move into the activation phase where you can perform attack, defense, and move actions. You can also choose to use any skill cards that you have in your hand. You can use an epic card if you have that. You can also choose to use any power, spending power to purchase new cards from your custom decks or from the basic cards. And there's also a few other options. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this and we'll see what Red Riding Hood has. Normally you're gonna keep your hand hidden from your opponent, but for this example, I wanna show you what Red Riding Hood has. So she has a skill card, Pot Shot, and each skill card, it requires you to spend a basic card of the same type. So with the Pot Shot, it is an attack card, so I must play an attack card with it to activate that card. Other than that, Red Riding Hood has two attack cards, two movement cards, and a defense card. So in order to use the Attack skill, it has a range of one, and right now Red Riding Hood is two spaces away from Sleeping Beauty, so she doesn't want to use that one yet. So let's go ahead and start off by using a basic movement card. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that, and this allows me to move one space in either direction. When I play this, I'll go ahead and make that move action, and then I gain one power, and the power I gain is based on the basic, uh, basic card that I use, it's level. So with a level one card, I'll gain one power. From there, then I'm going to go ahead and do a basic attack. And each basic attack must be done within range one. So I can do that now as Sleeping Beauty is range one or one range away from me. So again, I gain one power. And then Sleeping Beauty does not have any defense. So she is also going to lose one hit point. Then I'll continue my turn. So I'm going to go ahead and play a defense. That gives me another power and I also gain one defense. I will go ahead and do that pot shot now. So again, I have to play the skill card with a basic card to activate it. So it has a range of one and it does one damage plus the attack card that I played with it. If I would have played a level two card, it would actually have done three damage. So this will do two damage to Sleeping Beauty. I will not gain any power for this because the basic card is not played alone. It's played with a skill to activate that skill. So I do not gain power, but Sleeping Beauty will lose two more health. Now, each time Sleeping Beauty loses health, she's also going to gain a token to activate and wake her up. And I forgot to put those out. So first off, she would have gained one of those tokens for that first attack. And then with this attack, she'll gain two more. Now, if she had any defense, she wouldn't have gained the tokens until she was out of defense. And then finally, Red Riding Hood has one additional movement card. So we're gonna go ahead and play that. Again, I gain a power and she's gonna move back one space. Then I can go ahead and spend my power. So I have a total of four points of power that I can use to buy different cards. I can choose to buy cards from my area or the basic area. So I think with this, I am going to start gaining some more of my player's skill cards. So I'm going to purchase Crack Shot for two points, and I'm gonna buy another Crack Shot for two more points. That is going to reveal a twist card. So immediately I'm going to gain that and add that to my area. And this is Overdrive Burn. So this one says, when you use a skill that is an attack or a movement, you may discard one skill card from your hand to gain damage plus X, where X is equal to the discarded skills level. So that is going to really help. Then any cards that I use this turn as I am all done will be discarded. If I have any power remaining at the end of my turn, I would lose that as well. 
And then also if I had any cards remaining in my hands, those are also discarded at the end of the turn. And then finally I'm going to draw back up to my hand size of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So at this point, Red Riding Hood's turn is done, and so we're gonna go ahead and move over to Sleeping Beauty. So again, at the beginning of her turn, she doesn't have any cards up here, and she has no defense to reduce, so we don't have to worry about that, so we'll move right into the action phase. So with her, she has a defense, an attack, another defense, another attack, another defense. Wow, I got all the defensive cards, and I have a skill card that requires a movement, so I'm not going to be able to activate that this turn. So with her, let's go ahead and start off with, uh, we'll go ahead and play all three defense. So she's immediately going to gain three defense and three power. Unfortunately, she is out. She does not have the skill to activate her range and she is out of range of the attack cards as again, she has to be within range one of Red Riding Hood and she moved away, which is pretty fortunate for her as I could have done two damage to her. So I won't be able to use these, so these will stay in my hands. I do have three power, though, so I can choose to spend that to purchase a card or cards. So I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a level two attack card. So again, this will be added to my discard. These will go ahead and be placed in my discard. I'll spend my power for that. And again, at the end of my turn, any cards remaining in my hands will be discarded as well and I'll draw back up to, th to six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so at this point, then we move back over to Red Riding Hood's turn, and this is going to continue until one of the fab fables has been eliminated, losing all of their hit points. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there. I'm sure the creators are more than happy to answer any questions you have and would love to hear from you. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do appreciate it and I take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.